friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today I'm at the nursery. I feel like I've been here every day for the past several weeks. We are getting huge projects done. It's the noon whistle. It's 12 o'clock on a Monday. <laughs> Let me wait till the whistle's done. It only does one whistle for noon. Okay. It is currently 42 degrees outside, but where I'm standing, the heat's off in here. I have these little Bluetooth sensors to tell me exactly what the temperature is in here and right here in this hoop house where I stand, it's not a hoop house, it's a greenhouse, it is 70.7 degrees with 38% humidity. I love these things, they're little govies. I have one in each house. It's actually 75 degrees in greenhouse number one and it's 75 degrees in greenhouse number three. I don't have one set up in number four yet. That actually still has a gaping hole in the front of it that we have to patch up very soon. These, I'll put a link in the description. They are Bluetooth to my phone, so I have the app. You could also set them up on Wi-Fi so that I can check these from home. So if I'm home and I wanna see, oh, what the temperature of the nursery is, I can go ahead and open up my app if these are set up on Wi-Fi. Anyway, check this guy out. <laughs> We have the pot filler set up. We moved it from the barn to here because for the first couple weeks of the season, I'm only gonna be heating greenhouse number one and greenhouse number two. As the plants get bigger and they need more space, I'll turn the heat on in number three, move things over there, and then number four, so on and so forth. So we moved this old pot filler into this space so we can work and get some pots filled because I have plants coming up this week. I have burr root perennials coming and I'll do an unboxing video when those come. Uh, but then later this month, my huge order from Jolly Farmer of a lot of plugs and baby plants, those are gonna be here at the end of this month. We also moved some bales of potting soil in here so that they can thaw out because they've been in the barn and in the barn, they have been frozen solid. We moved probably one, two, three, four, five, six. There's nine bales over there. I'll just swing this baby around right there. Oop, this way, I'm not a meteorologist, I can't backwards. So there are the bales that Brad took out the other day and they're going to be thawing out. I think they're probably thawed by now. It's 70 degrees in here. I'm not going to be starting this baby up today. It was just a nice backdrop for the video right now is about I'm starting the very first seeds for the season here at the greenhouse. Now I did start some the other day and these are pansies and violas. They are a really early hardy spring crop. The first big spots of color that you can put out in the landscape. I'm starting three varieties from seed and I also did order some plugs in. I, I'll have to look up the variety of what I ordered in from plug, but I got some of those from Farmer Bailey and then I also may have gotten in some from Jolly Farmer. I'll have to check my order, but from seed, I'm starting Frizzle Sizzle Mini Tapestry. This is absolutely gorgeous. Nice, sturdy stems. They can grow, I think, 12 to 14 inches. Yeah, these are really beautiful. And then from Baker Creek, this is one called Viola Layata Fire. It's a beautiful purple yellow beauty. And then the final one I have on my list here from seed is a Nature Mulberry Shades Viola. And this is kind of just that dreamy color combination of corals and mulberry cranberry colors. Lots of beautiful shades and these are the ones I'm starting from seed. One of the former owners of this nursery, his name is Bernie Dolan and he owned this place for more than 25 years. He and his wife stopped by and he told me that every year he started his pansies on February 8th from seed so I'm bringing back that tradition of starting those seeds every year on February 8th. I'm a couple days late for these varieties, but I did already start a packet. Which ones did my, oh, Frizzle Sizzle. My mother-in-law started these the other day. So we are on track for a beautiful spring, guys. So let's go start these seeds. And for these, I'll be using soil blocks. In the five minutes that I've been recording, it's up to 74 degrees in here. Whew, it is, ugh. and this is actually the driest house. The uh, other two are about 50% humidity. Not something I have to worry about right now, but those are some things I'm gonna have to pay attention to when I actually have plants in here. Beautiful soil blocks. I made these using Vermont compost and I actually sifted it because sometimes there are some little tiny branches and stones and sticks and it only took me about five minutes to sift these and I used something that was actually already here. I'll show you. I just used this, can you even see? <laughs> you can't even see. It's um, got a screen over it. Maybe that's a little better. So it has a screen, I would say these are maybe a quarter of an inch holes, and I just put it over the top. 
of my bucket here and I poured my compost on top and I just kind of went like this, rubbed it through and I got all the little tiny sticks and stones because they may break your bones when you make a soil box. All the sticks, all the stones, all the branches, they're out of there and they made the most perfect soil blocks. I love them. A lot of people always think these are brownies, especially if you sprinkle them with vermiculite because then that looks like crushed walnuts. But they are indeed not brownies, but they are delicious and nutritious for your seeds. Handy dandy toothpick method and my mother-in-law had a little bowl. It is right here. Oh, she missed a seed. First thing I'm going to do is label my tray and I'm gonna be starting the Nature Shades of Mulberry today. And I have my, my tape. I think those aloe plants got too cold. We'll see. Mulberry Shades, label the tray. And I use a garden marker. They are resistant to sun and water damage. Ooh, last year I started my purple red straw flowers on March 6th in here. March 6th, good to know. They are a decent sized seed. They're sourced from Johnny's. These are the mulberry shade ones. I'm gonna start my way this way. Okay, I have an entire tray of these gorgeous pansies ready to go. Now I'm going to mist these and cover them ever so slightly with a very fine vermiculite. I do not need to put these on heat mats because they germinate between 62 and 68 degrees. I'm actually gonna start another tray because I wanna get another tray of these. And guys, as far as me potting these up, I'm probably gonna pot them up into six packs. I might do some four inch pots, but in general, I think I'm gonna do six packs with these. What do you guys usually buy your pansies? Do you usually buy them um, in six packs or do you do individual pots? Help me out. This is a soil block. 20 little blocks of soil are in this thing. If you guys haven't seen me use one of these before, I'll put a link in the description below. This is how it comes. You need to keep these clear of any debris which means you really should be dipping it or soaking it at least, I would say, every six blocks, depending how messy your stuff is, because if there's debris up there, it will allow you to release the blocks nicely. And I found that to be an issue the other day. I didn't clean it when I was done and stuff had dried in there. And my mother-in-law and I took uh, probably 10 minutes to get this thing clean. The blue did not come on here. Um, my hand was hurting. This was just a metal bar, and after repetitive use of this, my hand was hurting. So we dipped it in a rubber coating. Brad did that, and he did the same thing with the top so that it was easier on my hand because you're constant, you're gripping it like this, and it's constantly on the metal. It was just hurting my palm because I'm a baby. <laughs> so anyway, it's it makes these really nice little um, blocks, and honestly, this little three-quarter inch block is enough to grow things to either pot them up into bigger pots or I can go right from a soil block to the field when it comes to my cut flowers. A lot of people are always like, well, shouldn't you pot that up into something bigger? No, it actually grows to be the perfect seedling size right from this little block. I might do four inch pots with the pansies. I'm trying to think about how I purchased pansies before and I do see them available at other places in six packs, but I also see them in four inch pots. Soil blocking takes a little bit getting used to, but I've been doing it for a few years now. It, it's just about getting the soil the right consistency with the, the amount of liquid that you add to it. You want it to kind of keep its form without being sopping wet, but you also don't want it to be too dry so that it crumbles. I'd like to think that I've perfected the formula. <laughs> I use Vermont Compost Fort V, and I like that because I think it has all of the nutrients that the seedling needs for a while. You don't need to start fertilizing it until, you know, a couple weeks after the seedlings are born. Oh, I had some people ask about the horseshoe around my neck. <laughs> I call this my necky. <laughs> it's my necky. This is actually something I got 
from Brad for Christmas and it's my favorite gift because it's a Bluetooth speaker that I can listen to my podcasts but I could also hear if someone comes in the door. I don't always have my phone on me and honestly, I don't want my phone on me. And if I have my phone in my pocket, then I can't really hear the podcast very well. So I can leave my phone across the room and I still have almost, it's like having AirPods in, but it's something that I don't have to have anything in my ear. I can hear if somebody comes in the nursery, but I'm listening very, I mean, it's really right here. And I can have these on in the living room and listen to my podcast and Brad sitting in the seat right next to me. He can't really hear this. So the, the audio really is directed at me and me only. So it's not interrupting other people around me, but I can still hear if someone's calling my name or if someone comes into the door. I love these. I'll put a link in the description below. They are uh, monster brand. I don't think they were that expensive, but my mom was so impressed by these that she actually got a pair for my grandmother too so that my grandmother can hear what she wants to listen to but also hear if somebody's calling her from the other room. All right, probably a point down here so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just making you push and you pull and you make perfect blocks. A lot of times people will ask me how I water soil blocks. Honestly, it's super simple. You just water the tray. So you would put water, here's my coffee. I'd pour it right here. And the water just disperses around the tray and then it soaks up the water from below. And after a few minutes, if there's any water left in your tray, you can just drain it out. There's not many in this packet. These, these will definitely be uh, four inch pots because there are only 30 seeds in here we'll see we'll see if that's true there's one more in there it's a stubborn seed there it goes let's see if there are 30 seeds there might be I don't know there might be more looks like there's at least 30 seeds here and this is the Laetta fire it's beautiful 40 so far. I might get 60 out of this. So I love Baker Creek. Like you get a minimum of, you know, five seeds or 15 seeds, but there's always more in my experience anyway. 50, 59. That's awesome. 59 seeds, which is these three soil blocks right here. Let's make sure there's not one hiding anywhere. Nope, nothing left. So 59 of these Lay Out of Fire beauties. And then I will label that. And then I'll finish out the rest of the tray with a combination of the other two that I have. I had leftovers from each tray. So perfect, perfect, perfect. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go ahead and finish seeding the rest of this tray. Just wanted to bring you guys up to speed on this, the seed starting as far as that goes. But I'll tell you right now, you can see behind me, We've done some painting in here. This is uh, my calming, beautiful green. And you can see the door right there. That's my green door. Um, but I have so much video to bring you guys. I started looking it over this morning. There are probably 200 clips of video of things happening, of us finishing the floor in there and us starting the renovation inside the retail space. And I just got a partial sh shipment of some of my retail stuff that I will be offering to my customers, which I'll show you just one thing that just came in. Just to give you an idea, it's things like these. This is from Bonide. I use a lot of Bonide product. They're actually a local company. They're only about half an hour away. This is like slug magic for organic gardening. Information on the back, but this is part of what I'll be offering here at the nursery. There are, I would say 99% organic solutions and this is one of them. When you buy things like this, you have to buy a minimum of 12. So I have 12 bottles of Slug Magic, <laughs> things like that. And this is part of the cost that, uh, I guess I can't say that I, it's unexpected costs because you, know, you expect to have startup costs when you're starting a new company. But this is um, a lot. There's a lot of money that goes into opening up a place that has 
a retail because you have to buy all this stuff in advance. I'm spending thousands of dollars on products to that I could have this stuff available for my customers and hopefully people want them. You think that they would when they come in and they're like, I'm having a slug issue. You could say, well, I have slug magic. <laughs> it's slug magic. And that's basically the majority of the stuff that I have coming in here is the same thing. They're organic solutions to pest control. And I will have a display, not necessarily, I'm not sure where I want it yet, but I'll have a shelf with some products for people. And I'm not gonna have all 12 of these out on the shelf at the same time. I'll probably have three of them on the shelf and um, have the rest in storage. But hopefully it's it makes this not necessarily a one-stop shop, but more of a one-stop shop than just offering plants. When someone comes in with a problem, I'm hoping to have the solution. It looks really good in here. I'm really happy with it. My mom actually just left. She came in between seating trays. She stopped by and she put another coat of paint on the white door trim or white window trim. She's doing some white trim on the windows, um, yeah. So everyone's, everyone's just helping out and it's been really fantastic and I can't wait to share um, with you guys. I've been debating whether or not to just give it all to you guys in one longer video, show you all the clips of everything that's been going on. Cause I was just looking and I really haven't shared anything that's been happening at the nursery other than the Q and A's since the end of December. So I have video clips from the first six weeks of the year of us when we're here doing things. I can give you guys all of those clips at once or break them up into a couple of videos and I haven't decided what's gonna be um, the best for both me and for you. I'm still trying to figure out if it's easier for me to tell a story in one long winded, <laughs> here's everything that you missed or here's everything with the greenhouse number one in the floor and here's everything with the retail space and here's everything with the XYZ and this stuff. And, oh, there's a lot to do and I know some people were concerned when I didn't have a video for X amount of days, but guys, that's just because I'm just busy. I'm okay. It's just a really busy time. Just know that I am working to get that stuff out to you guys because I know you guys are waiting. Everyone wants to see stuff going on here at the nursery and believe me, I wanna get it ready and get it out to you guys. So that's probably what I'm gonna go home and do tonight. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna go ahead and start editing together the nursery. Here's what you've missed videos. I'm just gonna need some coffee though. Speaking of coffee, yeah. All right, thanks guys for sticking around. The first seeds for the nursery, they're underway. We'll see you soon. I have to lock the door the school bus not my kids um i have to lock the door because people see my car here and they they want to come in um because i took the curtains down you guys know how the curtains were up in here that was intentional so that people did not see me in here um because when people see me in here they come in here and right now it's um i don't mind it if they're my friends or family or neighbors and, and you wanna chat a minute, but um, it can be very distracting when I'm trying to get work done. I love pansies. They are beautiful. <sighs> Voila! Oh no. Viola. So much to learn. Oh.